our budgeting series. So in the first video, we talked about the basic budget setup and some of the budgeting tools that I use in my monthly budget. Now, if you haven't watched that video yet, I highly encourage you to check that out before you watch this one and it's linked down in the description below. Now, in this video, we're going to dive deeper into budgeting and actually determine the numerical values of our budget. This includes our income, our expenses, and our savings. Now, we're going to be talking about all three, but the main one we're going to focus on is our expenses because that seems to be the topic that trips people up the most when it comes to budgeting. So before we get started, I want to make sure you guys have everything that you need to work right alongside me. So the first thing you want to get is a budgeting planner. I have this one linked down in the description below. It's the one I used in the previous video. But if you don't have a planner, that's okay. You can grab like a big sheet of just plain paper or notebook paper, something like that. You just need a good amount of space to be able to write down all of your expenses. You'll also want to pause this video right here. And what I want you to do is to go online and get the last, say, two months of your bank statements because we're going to need those to be able to track our income and our expenses. So anywhere you put money, anywhere that your bills come out, go get those statements, print them out or have them pulled up because we're going to need those. Last but not least, grab something to write with and let's jump right into it. All right, y'all, I'm going to be using a completely hypothetical scenario to show you guys how you determine the numerical value of your budget. Also, since I am actively using my budget planner, I went ahead and made copies for you guys. So I'm going to write on that instead of the actual planner. But these are where I'm getting those pages from. Now, I'm filming this in January with the month being half over. So that gives you time, guys, to start preparing for February. So when we look in the budget planner, I mentioned this in the first video. I do use this calendar here and I kind of write down birthdays or events or anything that we have. So I know what to look forward to and what I may be spending money on. If you're working out of the same budget planner, you can take a second and go ahead and fill in your February calendar. Again, I use this time to write birthdays, events, or anything that you might have going on. Fill that in and we'll move on to the next page. Now, our next page is the one that I have made copies for here. It is our monthly budget. The two monthly budget pages has the income section, your fixed expenses section, variable expenses section. It also has one for savings as well as down on the bottom of the second page. You can track all of your expected versus your actual numbers. And again, as we go along, we are just using a hypothetical scenario. It's going to be a dual income scenario and I made it pretty easy with more whole numbers. So let me show you guys what we're going to be using. So for this scenario, we are going to have a husband and wife team and they each make $4,000 a month or $2,000 each bi-weekly. And this is their take home pay. It's not their gross income. It is their net pay that hits their bank account, which is a total of $8,000 per month. Now we're going to pause right here before I show you how to enter all of the income information in the monthly budget sheets. I want you to look now through your own bank statements and write down all of your net pay deposits. You're going to do this for yourself and any other person in your household that you are considering their income as part of your budget. It's very important that you calculate your total income because we're going to use this number to compare to our expenses to see how much we can save or put towards our debt or to see if you're maybe even negative compared to your expenses. And the income section of the monthly budget page is pretty straightforward. You're going to write the date that you got paid for each payment. You can write the name of your employer or work, me and Tim, or whatever you want right there. And then finally, you're going to write the amount of the payment. So as a reminder for our scenario, the wife brings home $4,000 a month, which is $2,000 biweekly. And the husband also brings home $4,000 a month, which is also $2,000 biweekly for a total of $8,000. So I'm going to go ahead and enter all of the income amounts on the monthly budget page. And that is going to be, let's say the first week the wife gets paid, she gets her $2,000. And then after that, the husband gets paid the next week and he's going to get his $2,000. And again, it's another week after that. So it's been two weeks since the wife gets paid. So she's going to get her next $2,000 deposit. And then finally, the husband is going to get the fourth and final check for all of their income of an additional $2,000. So that's going to total us $8,000 that this couple made for the entire month. And like I said, you can kind of fill in the source of your income however you want. This was just an example. So I wrote work here, but usually I just put the name of my fiance's employer when I do ours. So actually on this one, I'm going to go back and just to distinguish, I'm going to write wife which ones is her income and then which one is the husband's income. Now for people who are paid bi-weekly, 10 out of the 12 months a year, you will receive only two paychecks per month. 
However, there are usually two months per year that you will receive an additional check in that month. And the third check month is all dependent upon what do you get paid, like a Thursday or Friday, and also how many days are in the month. And if you like the month starts with a payday, like the first, you're more than likely going to get three checks in that one month. To simplify your budget, I would never count an additional check as part of income that you have for that month because that's not the majority. Majority of the time, you're only going to have the two checks. I would use that extra income to maybe pay down debt or to save or to catch up on anything else that you may have. Another example of extra income may be a bonus or something like that that your job gives. Again, I would not count that towards your regular budget. Use that for something else to pay down debt or to save. I also want to take a second here to remind you guys that this is a monthly budget. We are not doing a bi-weekly budget. The way I view it is that money we get for the entire month is for our expenses for the entire month. We're not budgeting our expenses based on a two-week paycheck. Now, some may say that this is the more experienced way to budget, but I kind of disagree. I think people believe this is the more experienced way to budget as you have to be more disciplined as you are not budgeting your expenses for every two weeks. You're doing it a whole month in advance. Now, I can see where they are coming from, but I believe just budgeting bi-weekly just takes so much more time and energy. And I feel like people would give up quicker than if they did an entire monthly budget that is a lot easier to maintain. But with doing a monthly budget, there's something you have to keep in mind. Sometimes you have to use the previous month's income to pay for your current month's expenses. And this is all going to be dependent on what day you get paid and what day your expenses are due. So for example, our mortgage is due on the first of every month. And if my fiance doesn't get paid until the second, I have to pull from last month's income to pay for that current expense. And speaking of expenses, now that we have our income figured out, we are going to move on to our expenses categories. We have fixed expenses and variable expenses. Now, if you have no clue what either of those mean, I'm going to break it down for you and let's start with the fixed expenses. Let's start by understanding what fixed means. It means predetermined or not subject or able to be changed. I want you to think of your fixed expenses as your main bills that come out each and every month. These expenses are going to be your bills that typically do not change in cost from month to month. A few examples of these expenses are going to be your mortgage, your auto loan, your phone bill, and your water bill. I'm definitely going to give you guys some more examples as we go along with our fake scenario here. Um, but first, I want you to take a look at your bank statement and highlight all of the fixed expenses. So again, your mortgage, your car payment, your water bill, your phone, anything you have like that, go ahead and highlight those. And again, we're thinking of our fixed expenses as our bills. Any reoccurring payment that we have each month, think of Netflix, um, anything that you have that you pay each and every month that is the same amount. All right, now let's fill in our chart. The first column that we have is our description. So like, for example, we have our mortgage. So I can either write just mortgage or I can write the name of the lending company that houses the mortgage. And then our couple in our budget scenario has a budget for their mortgage each month of $2,500. Now, this is the budgeted amount, not the actual mortgage, but we want to make sure we keep our mortgage payment within that cost, and I like to write it in the comment column. And I'll talk in further detail here in a little bit about the difference of why I like to set an actual budget amount for an expense versus the actual amount that you are paying for the expense. So we're gonna keep filling in our chart with our next expense, which is an auto loan that this couple has. And their budget for the auto loan each month is going to be $500. The couple is going to budget $100 for their phone bill. They are also budgeting $70 for their Wi-Fi or internet. Their budget is set for $75 for their water. And they are also setting aside $25 for their Netflix subscription. Now, as I'm filling those in for the example scenario, take a look at your bank account, see if you missed anything. Some other examples of some, like I have on my own personal budget, is our TV, which we have YouTube TV, so we pay for that the same amount each month. And then also another one, we treat this as a bill, but since I'm self-employed, we also put money into an IRA. Um, so that's maybe another idea for you guys there. Now, y'all may have noticed while I was filling out my fixed expenses that I skipped over two expenses listed on my mock scenario. The first expense was the electric bill and the second one was fuel. Now, you're probably thinking, Lauren, what the heck? You told me fixed expenses don't change and those two categories of expenses definitely change each and every month. 
I have these listed under the fixed expense category because I believe I told you guys in the previous video that our variable expenses are our cash expenses that we use our cash envelopes for. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I hate paying cash when I'm at the gas pumps. So I'm going to put that on a card. And then also with the electric bill, even though it changes every month, it is still a monthly bill that we must pay. And right now I'm pointing to the electric expense, which is $300 for this fake couple. And again, you're probably thinking, holy cow, $300, that's a lot of money for an electric bill. But what our fake couple realizes with these two expenses, they take into account the high end of each of those expenses. This fake couple knows that in the summer, their electric bill is going to be pushing $250, $275. And so they are taking that into account and setting their budget at $300. The same goes for fuel. They know that during the summer, they like to go on vacations. So they normally spend $350 on fuel, but during the summer, they're spending closer to $450 and they want to make sure they're within budget. So four categories like electric and fuel, I want you guys to do the same thing. Add up all your fuel costs across several months and take a look at your electric bills over a few months and see what the high end that you must place to set the number for your budget. And I told you guys I would come back to this next part. Now, bills aren't always whole numbers, but I like to operate budgets on whole numbers. It just makes it a ton easier. So let's take the Netflix expense, for example. Let's say that our charge each month for Netflix is $21.38. Now, I personally like to operate my budget on increments of five. So I would set my budget for Netflix at $25. That gives you a little room in case they go up again. Or if you just want, you can do $22 to make sure that your payment stays within your budgeted amount. But even if you want to, you can do the actual amount since most of our fixed expenses do not change over time. You can definitely do that. Like I said, I just like to work off of whole numbers. Okay, now that our fake couple has all of their fixed expenses written down for the month, we're gonna go ahead and total them all up in this column and write it at the very bottom. So when I add all of their fixed expenses up, it comes out to $4,070. So basically one of their entire monthly paychecks is the total of their fixed expenses. And again, I'm going to write that total in the very last box under the comment column. All right, now that the couple has all of their fixed expenses set up for the month, they are going to fill in the actual amounts that they pay for the fixed expenses as the month goes on. Okay, so for example, let's take the first expense, which is their mortgage. Throughout the course of the month, they checked their bank account and that mortgage payment came out on January 15th. So I would write that right there under the due date. I would write one slash 15. And then in the amount column, they will write the actual amount that came out of their account for their mortgage. So for this example, we're going to write 2,496. Again, just using whole numbers for simplicity. And personally, once a payment is paid out of my account, I like to check the little bubble under the paid column. And you're going to do this for every fixed expense that comes out of your bank account throughout the month. Now, with that being said, you pretty much know when your bills hit your account. So you don't have to go in there every month and update this chart. I would do it maybe once a week or so and add the ones that were paid throughout that week. You just want to make sure you have all of your fixed expenses and that you did not miss any so that your budget is as accurate as possible. All right, I'm not going to bore y'all with just filling this in, so I'm going to do that off camera, and I'm just going to enter a bunch of random mock scenario numbers. I also did want to mention, however, that on the previous video, I said I don't really use the notes section of the budget planner. There's one of those after each month, but I do use it to track all of my fuel expenses. I like to just write them down in the notes section so I have them all at one glance and I can add them up and then move them over to my fixed expense column on my monthly budget sheet. You definitely don't have to write them in the notes section. You could totally just add them at the end of the month looking at your bank statement. Okay, now that our couple has all of their fixed expenses written out, they're going to total them up and write them down in the very last box at the bottom of the column that all of their fixed expenses are listed. So the total amount that this couple actually paid in fixed expenses is $3,931. And remember, they budgeted $4,070, so they did great this month and stayed within their fixed expense limit. Also, not only did their overall total stay within their allotted budget, but so did each individual expense. 
Okay, but let's say, for example, their water bill actually turned out to be $76 this month, that it went up three total dollars and they only budgeted $75. This is a red flag that an adjustment needs to be made as they are not within the allotted budget of $75. So for the next month, if there is no possible way to lower their water bill, they can raise the budget to $80. However, for me personally, if I have to raise a budgeted expense amount, I want to be able to lower an expense amount in another category. That's when I take a good look at my budget and see where I have any kind of wiggle room. I noticed from doing my budget that I have consistently been in the 300s for fuel, so I'm going to lower that $500 budget down to $495, the same amount that I raised the water bill. By doing this, my budget amount stays the same and I am not cutting into any of my savings or money that I need to pay down debt. And at the end of the month, once the couple runs their final numbers, they will see that they were under $139 in their fixed expense category. All right, now that we have a little bit better understanding on fixed expenses, let's move on to variable expenses. All right, so variable means not consistent or having a fixed pattern liable to change. So this category is going to be all of our ever-changing expenses like car care, pet care, groceries, eating out. The expense and the dollar amounts for those expenses change every single time. Now, for this category, I want you guys to think of every expense that you possibly can. Comb through months of statements and look to see what you spend money on. Do you sometimes get your nails done? Do you have a child? Literally write down everything that you spend money on or put it in select categories. These are typically all of your random expenses that do not come out consistently every single month. Now let's take a look at our mock budget here. So for our variable expenses, we're going to have car care, eating out, groceries, Christmas, vacation, gifts, and insurance. And as a reminder, these are going to be our expenses that we pull cash out of our bank account for to put in our cash envelopes. Okay, and you're going to fill in the variable expense section just like we did the fixed expenses. So up first, the couple has the car care, which we're going to list under the description, and the amount that we are budgeting is $200. Next, they're budgeting $250 for the month for eating out. They're setting aside $400 for groceries. They are going to take out $50 each month to prepare for Christmas. They want to go on vacation, so they're going to set aside $200 for that. They are also budgeting $100 each month for gifts. Now, this last expense will vary between how you have this set up. It'll either be a fixed expense or a variable expense. So in my case, we pay insurance every six months for like car insurance or boat insurances every year. So I have it as a variable expense, but if you have it coming out of your account every month, you should list it under your fixed expenses. So for our example, we're gonna say this is car insurance and that this couple only pays it once a year. So they have to set aside $150 every month to make sure they have enough in 12 months to cover the cost of their car insurance. So again, say your car insurance is a monthly expense, you're gonna wanna move this to your fixed expense columns and not your variable expenses because it's typically gonna stay the same at least for the six months or a year that you may have a plan for your car insurance. All right, let's go ahead and fill that in on the chart. We're gonna put our insurance down for $150 per month. When we add all of the variable expenses up for our scenario, our total comes out to $1,350. And $13.50 is the amount that we want to pull out in cash every single month from our account. I also wanted to point out for our Christmas category, we're obviously not going to be using that money each and every month. We're going to be using more of that money towards the end of the year as it gets closer to Christmas. The same goes for vacation and gifts, but I feel it is so important to save for these categories as they are often overlooked and they are really what set people back when they are budgeting. As I previously mentioned, you want to think of absolutely everything that you spend money on and put it in a category and save for it and budget for it. All right, so the couple made it through the month and now they want to fill in to see how much they spent for their variable expenses. And I love variable expenses. They're super easy to track as you're just constantly keeping cash with you. So if you run out of cash, you're done spending for that category. And then you only have to actually reconcile it once at the very end of the month. 
And since you're only reconciling it once at the end of the month, you don't really have to fill in a date category or I just like to add the last day of every single month just because. And same goes for the paid category. You can check all those or just leave them blank. It doesn't matter. Now in the amount column, I like to write how much of each category did I spend that month. I like to write what I spend and not what I have left. And like I said, some categories are not used each month. So if I don't spend anything for Christmas, for example, I just write a dash through that box. We're just going to make up some numbers here for what the couple spent in the month for their variable expenses. And when you total it all up, they spent $800. So they'll write that $800 in the very last box under the amount column. And when they compare that $800 to the total amount of cash that they took out at the beginning of the month, which was $1,350, they will see that they have $550 in cash remaining. That $550 that they have remaining will roll into the next month. Again, the variable expenses are so important that you make sure you are taking into account everything that you are spending throughout the month some more examples of some variable expense accounts. So as I mentioned, there is pet care. So our dog, she has her own. I have my own that I get to spend each month for kind of miscellaneous expenses. My fiance has his own. We also take into account our Amazon subscription that is paid once per month. We have our car insurance, our boat insurance. Our son has his own spend amount and our son also has his own save amount. The variable expenses should encompass every miscellaneous expense that you have coming out of your bank account. So when that expense hits, you've got it covered and it's not going to mess up your budget. And in this example, we did have that extra $550 that we're going to carry over to the next month. And you want to carry it over because, like I mentioned, Christmas is not every month. You want to keep carrying it over. You don't want to put it towards your debt or your savings or anything like that because you're going to need that money come December. Those are future expenses that you have to be prepared for and incorporate in your monthly budget. All right, we've taken a look at both expenses now. Let's do a recap and work on the monthly summary. All right, so our first column is what we budgeted per category. So the first category is our income, which we budgeted $8,000. For income, your budgeted and your actual should actually be pretty close to the same unless maybe you get a bonus or a raise or anything like that. So our couple's budgeted income was 8,000. Next, we already have our couple's fixed expenses total on the other page, which is $4,070. Finally, the budgeted amount for their variable expenses was 1350. Now, moving over to the actual column, first we have the income, which again, you want to be close to your budgeted. They didn't get an extra paycheck or anything like that, so their actual was 8,000, just like the budgeted. And then for their fixed expenses, the actual amount that came out of their account was $3,931. And finally, for their variable expenses, they spent a total of $800 in cash. The last column in our monthly summary is the difference column. There was no difference for our income, so we're just going to draw a dash through that. Next, we've already determined the difference in our fixed expenses, which is $139. And finally, the difference between our variable expenses is $550. Now that the couple has all of their final numbers entered into the chart, they can see how much they have remaining to either save or pay off debt. So this month, the couple earned a total of $8,000 in income. And if you combine both their fixed and variable expenses, they total $5,285. Now, when you subtract $8,000 minus $5,285, you get $2,715 to save or put towards debt. However, we had remaining money left over in our budget, so let's go back and take a look at those numbers. Now, first looking at the variable expense numbers, we had $550 left over in cash. But remember, I told you guys, we do not want to put that back into our bank or use that to pay off debt or into our savings. We want to keep that $550 as cash to use on future expenses. Now remember, for our fixed expenses, we were under $139 because we budgeted more than the actual amount that we paid out from our account. So since that extra $139 is already sitting in our account, what we're going to do is add it to the $2,715 so that we can move that to either savings or to pay off debt. Our new total now becomes $2,854.
So the couple brought in a total of $8,000 to their account and income, but after they budgeted for their current and future expenses through their fixed and variable expenses, they have $2,854 that they can use to add to their savings account or pay down any debt. All right, y'all, we just completed a full mock budget using income, expenses, and showing you how to determine how much you have available to save or pay down debt. There are definitely so many different ways to run a budget. You can definitely take the way I do this and make it your own and what works for you and your family. I find that this budget does not take a lot of time, just a few hours every single month to help you stay on track financially. And once you get rolling with it, it gets even easier to manage. I hope you guys found going through this mock budget to be helpful and to give you a jump start on creating your very own budget. All right, y'all, that wraps up our second video in our budgeting series. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Or if it's maybe a more personal question that you want to ask me privately, you can message me over on Instagram and I'll be happy to help you out there too. Bye, y'all. See you on the next one.